Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. GSMC Basketball Podcast, right here on the GSMC Podcast Network. It is your host, back again to talk more basketball around the association and even college. Bryce Lewis back at it again, you know what it means here. We go ahead, got to get into NBA Finals game. Whoa. We also going to have to talk about rumors. Uh, we have more Oladipo news. We have some Washington Wizards news. We have, honestly, head coaching news. So we're going to really touch on a lot of different things throughout this podcast. Very, you know, multi-directional with everything that we have here. And and, and honestly, you know, this, this is what we love to see. If you're a guy in the media like myself, talking about the game you love, that I love, in basketball. So... Like I said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it, get through the show. Hope you enjoy the show today. Just a quick reminder, if you want to follow us on social media, go follow us on Twitter at GSMC underscore basketball. That is GSMC underscore basketball, where we talk about everything basketball out there. If you want to interact with us, make comments, give your takes, and we could have some fun there. Also, don't forget, whatever platform you're listening to us on, don't forget to leave a review, subscribe, any of anything. That whatever app, because we're on every podcast app that is available. And so if you want to, you know, show your support for the podcast and for me, just in my individual show, because we have other amazing podcast hosts on the basketball show as well, please do so as well. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and get into it. NBA Finals Game 4, as honestly, to me, Game 4 of the NBA Finals between the Lakers and Heat was the best game of the series overall. And in the end, the Lakers were able to come out with the victory once again, 102 to 96, going 3 1 in the series. Now it's only one win away from being the crown, the 2020 NBA champions. If we look at it last night, LeBron and AD actually didn't start fast in the game. LeBron only had eight points in the first half, AD wasn't really shooting. Both of their star players were not playing that well, but they still led at half. And it was really a defensive grind at first. It was a very this is probably again one of the more defensive games we've also seen this playoffs, especially in the first half. Very physical ball game between the Heat and the Lakers. Both teams putting it all on the line. Bam Adebayo came back last night. He had a pretty good performance in his return, uh, but it wasn't enough to beat the Lakers. Now they're only like I said, one win away. And Miami now will be fighting for their playoff lives in Game Five to stay alive. But like I said, we're going to get into the like, break up, breakdown of last night's game, and we're going to discuss. Anthony Davis, obviously 22 and 9. You know, four blocks. And those were four big blocks. He was the only Laker who recorded a block on the night, and he had four big ones. He showed last night why some people think he should have been Defensive Player of the Year over Giannis because he is able to make key defensive plays at key times that some people feel like Giannis was never able to make and sometimes can't shut down your best scorer or defender. Even LeBron said it after the game in the press conference, this is why Anthony Davis should have been player, Defensive Player of the Year. Like I said, LeBron had eight points in the first half, but bounced back with 20 in the second half, finished the game with 28, 12, and 8. He got to the free throw line a bunch last night, shot 12, 3, 5. You know, LeBron's had some struggles at the free throw line, but shot 10 of 12 from the line. Clearly, that was big. You know, the Lakers are not known as the greatest three three throw shooting team, and last night they had to shoot well because they had a lot of opportunities at the line, and they were able to convert them, and that's one of the reasons why they were able to keep their lead in the heat all the way through the second half. KCP gave him 15 points. He was their designated third score last night. Danny Green gave him 10. Morris gave him 9. Crusoe gave him 7. And Kuzma gave him 9 as well. So, as you can tell, the Lakers got what they needed. LeBron and Anthony Davis did enough. And they were able to pull up the victory over the Heat. And like I said, a very physical ball game. I mean, the Lakers, this game was close throughout. The biggest lead, I think, in this game was 9, I believe. 
it was it was it was late in the game when the Lakers really truly pulled away. But throughout the entire game, the biggest lead was really seven. And so both teams were very constantly around, especially in the second half. The Heat were always within three, within one, tied, within four, within five. And they just could never get over the hump. The Lakers were able to keep making plays when needed. But the Heat did shoot themselves in the foot from time to time during last night's game, which also hurt them in the long run in terms of being able to pick up the victory because they had opportunities to go on a run and really try to take advantage of this game and get the lead on the Lakers so that way they could proceed to try to tie the series up 2-2, but obviously it wasn't even going to happen. On the Heat side, Jimmy Butler led the way with 22 points. Wasn't as great offensively as he was in game three. And they and the Lakers defended him differently. The one thing that you've seen from the Lakers is they make adjustments quickly. If a player gets off against them, they will go ahead and make sure the next game that they don't allow that again. And they, one thing in this game, if you watch, they, they dare Jimmy Butler to shoot the three ball. Jimmy Butler is not a great three-point shooter. He's not Russell Westbrook bad, but he's, he's a very below average, average three-point shooter. And the Lakers were daring him to make it. And Jimmy Butler, a lot of times, a lot of people are going to say, kind of passed up a lot of shots last night. Didn't take shots that were there. And obviously was passing up on a lot of open threes because he, I guess he just, he didn't want to take that shot. He wasn't comfortable taking that shot. But, you know, I think Jimmy Butler should have sat there and took the shot. I think you have to take what the defense is giving you. And honestly, you know, I can understand, again, why he was passive, though. Because he's like, I'm not the best three-point shooter on the floor. I feel like if I take shots and I miss them, I'm not giving getting the best out of all of our offensive possessions. So I need to keep moving the ball around. Hopefully we can get into Duncan's hands. Hopefully we can get in the hero's hands and maybe have a better chance at a better three. Tyler Hero was the second leading scorer with 21. He he last night he 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 finished with 21, but Tyler Hero to me didn't have a great game. He made some good shots, but he uh, the Lakers really made him take a lot of uh, very hard, difficult shots. They took a lot of uh, very just low percentage shots and. I think that's one thing if you want to say Tyler Hero can improve on is he needs to improve his his shot quality. You heard Jeff Van Gundy say it on the broadcast. He said he's just taking really hard shots and and he needs to work on his shot quality, getting higher percentage shots. And I definitely saw that last night because the way they were guarding him, he did take some sometimes unnecessarily difficult shots last night, but he was the second leading scorer. Jay Crowder, 2 of 7, struggled, 8 points. Bam in a bottle, like I said, his return, 15-7. Not bad. He gave him some, some production. Duncan Robinson had 17 last night. He had a pretty good game. Kendrick Nunn had six. Iguodal had three. And Kelly Olenek had four as they went with an eight-man lineup last night. Obviously, Miles Leonard didn't play. So, you know, and that's and that's where we stand with, with the series. And like I said, now we're a game away potentially from the Lakers hosting up the trophy and, and winning it. The next time they play is on Friday. They get an extra day going to game five. So... We'll see how that affects things. Obviously, Miami knows again, backs against the wall. You expect Miami to come out fighting for their lives. The Lakers, though, they're only one game away. And I, it's funny, I, I, I kind of said this to my, some of my friends. I was just like, you know, I feel like in a normal NBA Finals year with fans, I feel like you could see teams sometimes just kind of being like, eh, a little bit. Because it's like, especially with a lead that they have, you may just be like, yeah, you know, I mean, we, we, we going to definitely, we're going to try to close it out tonight, but you may not see their best effort. In the bubble, I, I feel like these players are ready to leave. These players are ready to go. And so they're like, listen, we need to take care of business tonight so we can get this chip, celebrate, and leave. And get back to our families and, and leave this bubble. So I feel like that could be a low-key motivation for the players on the Lakers to say, listen, we're one game out of getting out of here. <laughs> we need to get the chip and get out of here. So we're the Miami Heat going to extend the series and make you have to stay in it longer. So maybe that's something that can motivate the Lakers when it gets to that point to help them not take the game lightly though they've won all their series in five games so they clearly in every closeout game done what they need to do to win which which I always I would think you know with a LeBron James led team that's what you that's what you would expect you would expect them to come out there and play well and do what they got to do on both sides if we look at the disparities on both sides offensively Lakers shot 44%, Heat shot 43%, obviously very closely contested in shots. Three-point shooting, 34 for Miami, 36 from the Lakers. Free throw shooting, 86%. Usually the Lakers, in most games as a team, average actually like 70, around 70, 75% for the game. So 86 is obviously a welcome sight. The Heat average 81. 15 turnovers to the Lakers for 11. Still could get the turnovers down, but obviously not as bad as it was last game. 25 to 18 in terms of assists. Obviously, 
The Lakers won the rebounding battle, especially in the fourth quarter. They got a lot of second chance points that I think really cost in Miami late in the fourth quarter. And I think that's one of the reasons why they were never able to fully catch up to the Lakers because they left a lot of second chance points and gave the Lakers multiple possessions. And so I think that was one of the things that really hurt them in the game. So if I'm the Lakers, like I said, you're one game away. LeBron's one game away from his fourth championship. And Anthony Davis is the healthiest he's been. You know, you know, honestly, this is probably the first year in a while that I think LeBron has caught good breaks. Usually every year it's Magic Johnson leaves, a star player goes down. It's like something happens that he has to go through while trying to compete. Oh, he has to go against a super team. <laughs> this is the first year he's kind of had a very even slate. There was no super teams. Because even, even though the Clippers were considered one of the best teams, they're not a super team. You know, everybody on his team pretty much stayed healthy for the most part, out in terms of his star players. And he, he just came out and won. And then the Clippers got eliminated. So that, I mean, you listen, if you want to call that a break, sure. Okay, if you, I'm sure people are going to sit here and say, we don't know what would have happened if the Lakers and Clippers actually met. But if you want to call that a break, then sure. But, you know, a lot of things went well for LeBron this time around. And LeBron obviously is a guy to me that if he has good breaks, he'll take advantage of them and he'll, and he'll execute and make sure something happens. Outside, again, of the 2011 finals, which we all know was probably LeBron's worst playoff series and worst time of his career, He's pretty much, when he when he's supposed to do something because he has the capability of doing it, he's usually able to do it. A lot of times he's facing a lot of upwards adversity where he has to overcome something that a normal person wouldn't. And sometimes he succeeds and sometimes he fails. But that's expected. This is the first time where he's never had to do that. He, he just kind of had to, they were the favorites after the Clippers lost and they just had to do what they had to do, play their brand of basketball and do what they got to do and, and be successful. So, you know, that's great for, for him and, and, and the success because now he'll have his fourth championship. Listen, people are going to make excuses. Oh, he didn't play anybody great. He got an easy path to the title. At the end of the way, at the end of the day, a championship is a championship. At the end of the day, a championship is a championship, and you can't take that away from him. Literally, we're giving asterisks to Kevin Durant because he joined a super team. But then LeBron doesn't even have a super team. He just has one other star. And then just because one team that has the same amount of stars gets eliminated, now all of a sudden they're gonna put an asterisk by that. Like, like I don't like. I feel like we put too much emphasis in this championship thing. We always try to look for every reason to say, "Oh, it's not that great of a championship. It's a great championship." They make it sound like Brian has to go through super teams from first first round to the finals and beat them all for this to be like a great championship win. If 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 if, if, if it's a team that they're projected to beat all the way through. They, oh, well, they, it's not an impressive win. If he wants to be the GOAT, y'all make it sound like Michael Jordan was not the favorite in most of his finals. Like, like when they started winning, when they started winning, y'all act like he wasn't the favorite in most of the finals. You act like he didn't have the better team in most of those finals. Y'all make it sound like he, he was overcoming something every single time. And it's just like, that's what I'm saying. People just don't want to think about that. People don't want to take that into consideration. But, you know, like I said, Lakers are a game away. And, you know, Miami Heat, I'm expecting them to come out and fight. I'm expecting them to come out and claw. But if I had to give a prediction on game five, I'm going to go ahead and say that the season will officially be over and the Los Angeles Lakers will be your new 2020 NBA champions. But that's all the time we have here for this segment. Coming up next, we're going to get to some news and rumors around the association talking about the Wizards, Bradley Beal and John Wall, and also Victor Oladipo. More, more rumors on Victor Oladipo, and if he's been wanting out of Indiana for longer than what we've been reporting so far. All that right here and more on the podcast. Listen up, sports bettors. This is Bryce, here to tell you about my favorite sports book, and that's Bet US Football, basketball, and baseball are all back, and that means it's time to get down your bets. I only endorse one sports book, and that's BetUS.com. Why, you ask? 
BetUS is, a, is the pioneer in online betting with more than 25 years in the biz. You need a sports book with integrity and longevity, and you need to know that you're going to get paid. You need a sports book that's going to offer everything, including live betting, MMA, golf, horses, esports, entertainment, and all kinds of crazy prop bets and futures. Call today at 1 800 My Bet US. That's 1 800 My Bet US, and they will talk you through getting started. Nobody in the industry gives bigger bonuses than Bet US. Join now, mention GSMC, and you can get up to 150% in bonuses on your first deposit. Nobody beats that. I bet at Bet US, and so should you. Join Bet US today. That's betus.com or call 1 800 My Bet US. Mention GSMC to get 150 in bonuses on your first deposit. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we discussed Game 4 between the Heat and the Lakers as the Lakers take a 3-1 lead in the series and is only one game away from winning the trophy and hosting it, hoisting it on midnight at Friday night. Obviously, the Heat are going to come out and try to fight and claw. Eric Spolster said this is they never expected this to be easy. Winning a championship was never going to be easy, but he expects his team to come out and respond on Friday, getting that extra day off so both teams can get a little bit more rested for that potentially the final game of the NBA season, but we'll see if, if it, it will it really will be or will the Miami Heat be able to extend the season at least one more game and fight a little bit longer for a chance to maybe potentially push it to a game seven. But now we're going to get to some news and rumors around the association. And there's one team, I think, we, 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 in the Eastern Conference, who do we think is going to be good next year? Just We, we just know. Boston, probably. The Raptors, depending on how this team looks in Van Van Fleet and everything. The Bucks, we're assuming, is going to be good next year as well. We're probably thinking Miami's going to bounce back and be good again next year as well as also. So that's four teams. Potentially Indiana, right? Uh, Brooklyn, obviously, with Kevin Durant and Kyrie, are going to be championship contenders. But there's one team that I think we haven't talked about that the last, and the, and this team hasn't been healthy for a while. And the last time they were healthy, they made it to the Eastern Conference semifinals and lost in the seven games to the Boston Celtics. I don't know if y'all have caught on to who I'm talking about yet, but there's a team that I think might bounce back next year and be a playoff team, and I think that's the Washington Wizards. The Washington Wizards are going to get John Wall back and it is reported that Bradley Bill is content staying with the organization and is willing to give it a shot with John Wall coming back from his injury. Because we forget when the Wizards, when John Wall and Bradley Bill were healthy, were top four seeds usually making it to the Western Conference semifinals. I believe there were two games away against Atlanta from making it to the semi, the semi to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, and then a game away against, against Boston. And this team is obviously different than that team. Bradley Bill's been having to carry the load for the last two years while John Wall's been out. Now John Wall returns. John Wall is getting himself, trying to get himself back and ready to go, back in shape, ready to play. John Wall may not be the fastest player in the league anymore, but still a very dynamic player, a playmaking player. He can make plays. I always like to say sometimes when you're out this long, all you can really do is rehab and improve your game. So you might see a more efficient jump shooter from John Wall potentially having all this time to work on his jump shot. 
You know, he's also one of the better defenders in the league. A lot of people will underrate John Wall as a defender as he's a long, lengthy defender with Bradley Beal. So the be- one of the best backcourts in the Eastern Conference are going to be back together next season, and I expect them to be back in the playoff race next year as well. Obviously, they got the rookie from last year. I, I, give, I say his name wrong all the time. Like, I think Hunker Mora. He obviously he's the rebounding machine. He showed some potential last year. They have some guys that they like from the current team, and it'll be interesting to see what the what they try to do this offseason and try to maybe make some upgrades potentially. Because they got some guys. It's just you know I'm saying you you're doing a lot of makeshift changing because of the fact that you didn't have Bradley Beal and John Wall, especially in the bubble. And it, it's interesting that they said that Bradley Beal is willing to give it a shot because obviously Bradley Beal is always at the center of trade rumors. He's always at the center of because of how the success of Washington the last two years have been. And he's a and he's a very good quality player. Oh, you know maybe he's going to want out. Maybe he's going to want to leave. Maybe he's going to want to go to a new team that he can win a championship and compete for a championship with. But Bradley Beal has showed loyalty. Bradley Beal has showed the desire to stick around even through it and just and and, and keep hoping for the best. And now that he's getting his running mate and John Wall back, we'll see. But, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how they both play together. You could honestly say Bradley Bill has made strides as a player while John Wall's been out. He's improved his game while John Wall's been out. Because before it was kind of John Wall was the guy and then Bradley Bill was his sidekick. Well, recently, Bradley Bill has been the guy with no sidekick. So, will what will happen when John Wall does come back? That's going to be the, that's going to be the question. What's going to happen when they do come back? And so, when we when we get to this point, when we get to this place, I think John and Bradley do need to sit down and have a conversation and be like, hey, so I understand that you've been basically the guy on the team the last couple of years. I've been out. You know what I'm saying? John Wall isn't getting any younger. He still probably can play at a high level, though. Nah, I'm definitely not expecting him not to be able to play at that level. They might need to still rely on Bradley Bill to start and let John Wall work his way back into playing shape, work his way back into the John Wall of old. He hasn't played the game basketball for like two years now. We can't just expect John Wall to be John Wall game one back. You got to give him time. And so I think if you're the Wizards, you need to rely a little bit on John Wall. You need to try to say, hey, we kind of need you to carry us a little bit. We need you to kind of like, you know, really like be the guy for us till you get back until John gets back to where he is and then y'all have to see how that works because if it works then you got two guys who can score you got two guys who can defend and are going to be another challenge the Eastern Conference the Eastern Conference could be really deep next year really usually when you get past the first maybe five or six teams it's usually the seventh eighth seeds are like losing record teams that don't have a single shot even that, I expect to be more competitive. I think the Hawks are going to be better. I think Chicago is going to be better. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of teams that could be better than what they were last year. Like I said, it, it's gonna, I, I think the Easter Conference is going to shock some people next year. Because like I said, we have, a, we have a lot of returning talent and a lot of returning players coming back. And so, with that being said... I definitely think the Wizards are going to be a team that when next season comes around, they'll be in that race with their two best guys back, ready to go, ready to play, ready to compete. We also have more rumors coming out of Indiana about Victor Oladipo and him potentially wanting a trade. So basically the report says there has been rumblings since January that Victor Oladipo has been open to a trade. So they're saying that he actually has been kind of looking at leaving the Pacers since the beginning of this year. Obviously, like I said, as we know, his his contract will be up after the next season. So he'll be a free agent. But they've said Oladipo is very open to being traded away and playing for another team. So that's going to be the big thing. Obviously, like I said, we know about Oladipo's dirty. Ruptured his right quad tendon. Came back. Wasn't exactly the same Oladipo. 
Played a little bit better in the playoffs, but still just was not what we used to see with Oladipo. Obviously, Indiana is a team that probably needs to try to retain a guy like Oladipo because they don't get a lot of stars to come to Indiana in the first place. But obviously, Oladipo may not have the intention of staying there and being a part of of the organization when it comes to a longer term situation. But like I said, we don't have a full confirmation. We'll see if Indiana does decide to potentially move him this off season. It's just something we got to keep an eye on really. We, we, because we, we don't know if it's a move that's going to be made. We, we just got to keep an eye on it. And see, you know, is a team willing, maybe willing to offer up some money. Offer up some draft picks, maybe some key players in Indiana to get Oladipo off if they feel like he could contribute. Because I feel like Oladipo is a guy that maybe a championship team or a team that has championship aspirations would try to go after. One team I'd tell you to look at, the Milwaukee Bucks, because they are looking for more playmakers. They could potentially maybe try to make a move. Maybe you could see an Eric Bledsoe, Victor Oladipo swap potentially. That's something that could happen. Give somebody another playmaker for the for the for the Bucks to have. And if that happens, did will have did that mean the Bucks? I mean the Bucks would get better. Indiana would help get another piece that they could say, hey, can add into what we're trying to do. So that's that's gonna be the biggest thing here. But also we have the report from the Clippers. Obviously, we talked about head coaching. Last week, or last episode, a lot about who's going to be the new head coaches for these potential teams. But we have some news coming from the Clippers. As there are three top candidates right now. Especially another top candidate is Bucks Darvin Ham. As he is the Milwaukee Bucks assistant coach, is expected to interview for the Los Angeles Clippers vacancy this week. He's also scheduled to meet with the Pacers, too, as well. So, obviously, that'll be interesting to see what, if, if that potentially is a hire the Clippers would make. Though, they still reported that Ty Lu has the inside track on the job. Clippers are probably just doing their due diligence and just trying to, you know, keep an eye out. See, potentially, maybe could someone else bring a plan in that might entice him a little bit more. Obviously, Steve Ballmer is definitely out here looking for a guy he thinks could bring in and, and win a championship with his roster. So, Also, keep an eye on Warriors assistant Mike Brown. Mike Brown, a former head coach at Cleveland and the Lakers. Another candidate in that race as well. I don't see that really happening to me. I don't think that would happen. I don't see Mike Brown getting another job for a while. But obviously, again, it's just another name to interview. But at the end of the day, I still fully expect the Clippers to go with Ty Luke. I, I just feel like why wouldn't you go with Ty Luke? That would probably be my bet, my biggest thing. It's just like, why wouldn't you go with Ty Luke? And then one more story before we get out of here. Obviously the NBA probably starting their season in Jan- January. One thing that's happening next summer as their season would run into the summer. They potentially would have their season going on during the Tokyo Olympics. So a question that has been asked is, would the NBA stop their season for the Tokyo Olympics? It's been reported that the NBA probably is unlikely to stop the season in order for players to compete in Tokyo. Because remember, the Olympics are coming up. Usually a basketball team is formed. And Adam Silver is basically saying... I mean, we're 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 in the we're we're, dirt, we're in a season, and I'm not just going to stop the season and then send him overseas to play in the Olympics. He even said it like this: It's not just a function of stopping for a period in which they are competing over in Tokyo, but they require a training camp and then require rest afterwards. So there will be too much complications with trying to stop the season to restart the season. Obviously, that's one thing they wanted to maybe attempt to avoid. But maybe they're feeling like, you know what, 
it doesn't matter. Maybe maybe they may have a rule if they want to feel still feel the team. You uh, you know we'll be probably second third round maybe in the playoffs by the time the Tokyo Olympics happen. Maybe the teams that have already been eliminated or the teams that didn't make the playoffs can have their players play in the Olympics since the season would be over for them. And then just obviously the teams who are remaining left would continue the playoffs. That's something I could see them doing when it gets around that time. But I definitely think it's a good decision for Adam Silver not to stop the playoffs for the Olympics because at this rate, you already have COVID and everything. You can't really afford to stop it again because then you have to rechange scheduling again. And I'm sure Adam Silver's just like, we're trying to stick to the schedule so we can get back to a normal schedule and by 2022 and be good to go. So I definitely understand that decision making. But that's all the time we have here on the podcast. I mean, not on the podcast, this segment. I'll about to say, I'll wrap it up the show. For this segment, that's all the time we have. Coming up next, we're going to talk about a new destination that execs see as a potential top destination for stars. So stay tuned if you want to hear all that on the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last segment, we talked about a lot of news from Victor Oladipo. Apparently being open to being traded since January of this year. So obviously being open to leaving Indiana if the opportunity presented itself. Also, we discuss Clippers head coaching candidates who is in that list currently to potentially get the job. Three candidates are currently in that spot. And then we also discuss the Wizards. Bradley Bill saying that he'll give it. Another shot with John Wall obviously returning. I think the Wizards could be a team that could definitely compete for the playoffs next year with John Wall back, Bradley Beal. Because, I mean, listen, they were a playoff team beforehand. I don't see why they wouldn't be a playoff team this time around. This is also a different roster. I think they have actually a good constructed roster. They just don't have the star power to, to, to really do something with it. And everybody's getting better. I'm sure they're going to try to make additions. Getting to have another lottery pick this year. The Wizards could be a team to watch out for next year in the Eastern Conference because everybody's talking about Brooklyn and everybody else, but the Wizards are a team that could definitely make some noise next year when they get fully healthy with their backcourt. But now we're going to get to some more rumors and news. As reporting to Adam Wells of Bleach Report, the Heat are seen as a top destination for stars via trade and free agency by execs. In this article, I'm going to read this article to y'all, what they're saying. And I quote, Regardless of how things play out for the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals, they have positioned themselves as premier landing, as a premier landing spot for talent. Per the ringers, Kevin O'Connor, various front office executives believe the Heat have become the league's top destination for free agents or players under contract who are unhappy with their current situation. And I quote, Maybe it will be a free agent or maybe a player under contract who will seek a trade in 2021 since the Heat have good young players who could be traded in addition to first-round picks in 2025, 2026, and 2027. Keep in mind, Miami emptied the draft pick cupboard to acquire LeBron and Bosch 10 years ago. Who knows what could happen in the coming years with Houston, Indiana, Philadelphia, or any of those teams facing crossroads. It's unclear which players the Heat might attract as free agents or pursue in trades at this point. For instance, O'Connor noted people around the league believe Bradley Bill is going to give it a shot with Wizards, with the Wizards next season with John Wall expected to return from the Achilles injury. The biggest name that has been directly or indirectly linked to Miami is Giannis Akimakumpo, Shams Karnia. 
of the Athletic and Stadium reported last October that the Heat were focused on keeping their salary books as clean as possible for the free agency class of 2021. That would include also with Kumpo, Paul George, LeBron James, and Kawhi Leonard. Right now, the two biggest names on the trade block are Victor Oladipo and Jer- Chris Paul. Jarrett West of the Athletic reported on September 27th that Oladipo is looking to move on from the Indiana Pacers this offseason. Oladipo denied the report while speaking to Fat Joe on Instagram Live. He said this, I'm a Pacer. I can't control the rumors, man. All of the ones on the internet, I don't know where they come from. I'm just in the background working out, working on my knee, trying to get right for next year. Per Mark Berman of the New York Post, the Oklahoma City Thunder are motivated to trade Paul this offseason. Based on how quickly NBA moves, there could be certain certainly be more marquee matchups and marquee names available via trade in the coming months. The Heat's run to the finals has been an excellent showcase for head coach Eric Spolster and their young talent. Jimmy Butler is an on-court leader, but Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero have just been just as essential to them as getting them as far as they have in the playoffs. Miami has all the pieces in place that make it an obviously attractive destination for players. It's just up to Pat Riley and the rest of the front office to determine who might fit what the organization needs and make their best pitch if the right star becomes available. So, this isn't surprising. I mean, the Heat are a team that you... I, I like to say they're they're the Toronto Raptors. Except the only difference is, is that this team made it to the NBA Finals without... You know, that Kawhi Leonard type of player. Because the the Raptors, we look at the team and say, if they get another star, they would be a championship contender. Literally, when they got Kawhi Leonard, they got win a championship. That's all they added, and they won a championship. And I feel like the Miami Heat, making it to the finals, being where they are right now, they come off to me as a team that's like, well, if they get another star, another type of superstar, they would be right back in the finals and potentially probably the favorites. Obviously, I feel like ideally, with a lot of the young players they have on the contracts they have, ideally, you probably want to pick someone through free agency so that way you can keep the nucleus and then add a player in and that way try to go make that run. But we'll see. Like I like I mean like they said they're keeping their cap rooms up they're keeping the cap room open. They're not you know making any rash decisions or any quick judgments. They're just trying to make sure they stay in position to potentially get a great player if he comes available. Like I said, the class for twenty twenty one, a lot of free agents are going to be available. We don't know who's going to end up where, and so I'm sure the Heat is hoping they can potentially land one of those guys and potentially have Jimmy Butler also around, and then maybe you know it's Holly Hero, Bam and Abao, whoever. And try to make another run on a championship then. And be title favorites when that time comes around as well. So. Definitely an interesting dilemma. But. I think everybody is in agreement. If the, if the Heat were able. To acquire a star player. They would most definitely become a team that. You could honestly say. Would be. Favorites in the Eastern Conference. Especially after doing what they did this year with the talent they have. So, definitely, definitely watch out for the Heat for years to come. Because they're a team that might be hanging around the top of the Eastern Conference and the top of potentially the title contending pitcher for a while. So, that, that, was, that was news over there who execs are seeing us the top stars. Now we're going to get into a report about next season as the NBA and NBA PA are discussing a plan for late January as a potential start date and the return of fans a possibility. Jasmine Winbush of CBS Sports wrote this article. I'll read it to you guys right here. The NBA, the 2020 NBA Finals are in full swing. The Lakers are up 3-1 to one right now on the Miami Heat. And while it's incredibly strange to watch playoff basketball in October like this, 
there was a point in time where it didn't even seem like a real possibility due to the coronavirus pandemic. The NBA bubble has gone off mostly without a hitch, though the league has done a tremendous job keeping COVID-19 at bay. Commissioner Adam Silver and those who helped put this on certainly deserve a pat on the back, but after but this bubble is only temporary. After this season concludes, the league will have to figure out how to conduct next season without a bubble amid a co- pandemic that is still very prevalent. Silver said that his best guess was that the season would start in 2021, as the NBA aims to play games in market without a bubble present for the entirety of the upcoming season. Anything the league decides will have to be agreed upon by the National Basketball Players Association. According to Executive Director of, M- N- of the MBPA, Michelle Roberts, the players are seeking or seeing eye to eye on several topics regarding next season. The latter part of January, February, makes sense. If it's later than that, if we have a terrible winter because the virus decides to reassert her, to reassert herself, that's fine. Roberts said via the athletic, the absolute earliest would be January, and that's doable. Both sides agree that the following season should be 82 games played in market with reduced travel and explore the possibility of having a set amount of fans at each game. Per Shams Carney, free agency is expected to begin no later than December 1st, and the projected salary cap isn't expected to fall much lower than what the league anticipated 115 mean after COVID-19 shut down everything back in March. The league has already set a date for the 2020 draft, which is expected to take place on November 18th. But but aside from that, nothing has been nailed down. Our players and the teams are on the same place here. We need to get a cap. We need to know what the tax is, Robert said. I think the teams want to, as quickly as possible, after the draft and before free agency, plan and prepare. I don't blame them. The worst positions for the teams to be in is to be is to be in is having no certainty. One of the first orders of business will have to be to agree on the cap, agree on the tax, so teams can draft intelligently, trade intelligently, and deal with free agency. And our players want to know too. It's amazing what needs to be accomplished in the next six weeks, but it has to be done. I feel sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later is key, especially considering the NBA and Players Union agreed that an eight-week notice would be given to the players ahead of when the season would start. The longer the league goes about making a decision, the further back the season will start in 2021. If two sides can't come to an agreement, a lockout for the upcoming season could be possible, although Albert doesn't think it will come to that. I would bet there is not a chance of a lockout, Robert said. If it happens, it will absolutely be because they are unreasonable and folks without any foresight are driving the train. I happen to think Adam is neither one of those. We're going to resolve this. In relation to the league, will ever get back to its typical fall to summer schedule. Roberts doesn't think it's possible, not just because of COVID-19 though, but because the owners see revalue in pushing the start back of the date of the season back permanently. Even before COVID happened, there were conversations about starting our season later. Why compete with football in the fall? Why don't we start our season around Christmas? It may very well be that our regular schedule is going to change, not so much because of COVID, but because of the ability to experiment. I wouldn't bet on returning to the normal. And that's what they said in that argument. And obviously, Michelle Roberts probably understands and knows that's probably realistic that the schedule won't change back to what it is. And people have been asking the schedule not to change back to what it is for a very long time. People feel like the schedule was always meant to be where it was because, like they say, why compete with football? Why compete in the middle of football season? If you start it at least after Christmas, you're at closer to the end of the playoff, uh, um, the NFL season. You're at the end of college season in terms of just games on a week-to-week basis. You're just having bowl games at that point. And so now you won't have as much competition, and you'll be in good shape. So I think it's actually a very good idea if they do that, and I think they'll be in good shape moving forward when it comes to it. So definitely think with Michelle Roberts, they're going to do everything they can to make it work, and as they should, I believe they will make it work and be able to give us the basketball that we want once again and us be able to enjoy basketball and, and consume it in a way that we haven't been able to consume it for a long time. So we'll have to see how everything goes with that. But 
That's all the time we have here for this segment. Coming up next, we're going to go more into some news around the association as we're going to talk about free agency. Obviously, I already mentioned in LeBron's Adequo, expect to begin no later than December 1st. There are some rumors that the Rockets might have a favorite head coaching candidate and other news and rumors around the association. So stay tuned for all of that right here on the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Last summit we broke down and we discussed Zex seeing the Miami Heat as the new top destination for potential stars. So obviously they're taking some stars and especially with the 2021 free agency for draft class or not the draft class, free agency class comes out with LeBron, Kawhi, Paul George, Giannis. Maybe one of those guys might be looking to join the Heat or potentially through a trade, maybe through a Victor Oladipo or Bradley Bill or somebody else. We also talked about other things that happened around the association as well. But now we're going to get into, I, I like to say, just a rapid fire of different news, just different things. I'm going to come at y'all with different things different things to talk about throughout this entire segment to end out our show to keep you guys informed of what's going on around the NBA. So, first thing. It says, currently, the Knicks, all my Knicks fans out there, I know y'all were kind of short-chained with the draft pick you got this year in the NBA draft, a little disappointed, but you still have to take a player. And you never know. Listen, we, we always sit here and think players are not going to be good. It, it, it's crazy. The NBA is one of the few sports, bro. You get a, you get a lottery pick. And just because he may not be a top two, top three player, it's almost like every player is just like, uh, why, why do we need to draft a guy? They're not going to do it. It's almost like y'all expect the rookie to be ba- to be bad, not realize you could still get a star player out of that position. You just still got to be good at scouting and and finding a guy who fits your system. But one guy it says the Knicks might not take a look at or potentially draft is Cole Anthony from North Carolina. They say currently the Knicks are leaning against taking Cole Anthony with the eighth overall pick. And so, that's maybe a player. I don't know how Knicks fans feel about Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony was a pretty good scorer at North Carolina, but obviously, the Knicks need a guard, but maybe they feel like he's not the guard they want to go after, because obviously, a lot of people have been directing the Knicks are probably going to try to make trades. A lot of people think the Knicks are not even going to keep this draft pick. They think the Knicks are going to try to be active in free agency and to trading to get the guard they need, because obviously, that's the biggest need that the Knicks have is point guard. And so... They're probably not looking to bring another young player in there to try to man that position. They're probably going to look to move that selection. But again, if they do end up keeping the pick, it seems like Cole Anthony won't be the guy that they will end up selecting and they will end up going in a different direction. Also, Rockets have met with Kenny Atkinson. Former Brooklyn Nets head coach has met with him for the vacant cut job. And listen, I think Atkinson would be a very interesting fit here. If he did join the Houston Rockets, I think it would be an interesting fit based off just what he brings to the table, what he can bring to the table. Uh, it would be interesting to see how he would do with guys like a Russell Westbrook or a James Harden, you know, trying to get them, you know, to work within his system, work within his offense, work within his team dynamic. Like I said, I still feel like Kenny Atkinson's better in a, Give me young players, give me young talent, let me develop them, let me let me get, maximize their potential. But you never know. He might do pretty well with guys who are already established stars. Listen, it depends on, I guess, how Russell and, and James look at him. We all know KD and Kyrie basically did not see, them as, see him as a guy who could get them over the top. That's why they wanted him gone. So we'll, we don't know... Would James be happy with this decision? Would Russell be happy with this decision? And et cetera. 
So that'd be very interesting indeed. Obviously, Kenny Atkinson, like I said, had some success. And, you know, hopefully we'll see what happens, you know, because he was, he was responsible for helping Chris LeVert and Brooklyn develop. Jared Allen, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Joe Harris. He helped put them in positions to be better players, and now they are all key players to the Brooklyn Nets right now. But, like I said, outside of Kevin Durant and Kyrie, who weren't on board uh, above it, you know what I'm saying? It, you saw how it didn't work out. Because obviously, if the two stars didn't like you on one team, you're always going to have that traveling with him if he tries to go to another team. How would you do with, with another team with two stars? So, like I said, that's a question that they may have. Is Kenny Atkinson better as a developmental coach? Or is he better as a guy who maybe could take stars in a team that may have championship aspirations and get them over the top? Because he really never had that chance in Brooklyn to show that. Even though, but we've seen what he has done with teams that he has to develop. So obviously, they, like I said, that would be a very interesting candidate for the Houston Rockets. They still other have guys in the in the running like Ty Lue and Jeff Van Gundy, potentially. So we'll have to see, again, what would end up happening if maybe he did get that call or he did get that opportunity. And now we also have another report. Alvin Gentry, former Pelicans head coach joins Luke Walton's coaching staff with Sacramento. Obviously, Alvin Gentry just let go by the Pelicans this offseason after they were having a bad bubble showing in the tournament, was fired by the Pelicans. He is now their new associate head coach. And listen, Gentry, we all know his strengths. He can coach up some offense. If if, if Luke Walton lets him kind of take some of the reins on the offensive end, they they offensively, Sacramento could be a better team. They have a lot of offensive talent. So I definitely think this could be a good move depending on what Alvin Gentry has the ability to get his hands on. But also, I think Alvin Gentry could help Luke in terms of his development as a head coach. Because I think for the most part, most teams, Luke was kind of the guy and then everybody was just coaching with him. Where Alvin Gentry, since he's the new associate head coach, that's basically the guy below head coach. If Luke Walton was tossed, Alvin Gentry would be the head coach. So clearly, you know, I think that would actually be a good a good, a good decision. I think it'd be very interesting to see how how Evan Gentry does in this role, as like I said, the associate head coach. And we'll we'll have to see if everything works out. You know, um, just like I said, the kid struggled this year. I'm I'm very very sure that Luke Walton will be out the door, and he will not be a part of the franchise anymore. And Listen, we already heard talked about what happened with him and Buddy Heald. Clearly, you see, it's not always on the same page. It's not always great. It's not always easy out there in Sacramento. And that's why that team has usually always gone through these situations in the, in the scenarios they've been into. Also, we mentioned this earlier in the show, NBA free agency is started, expected to start no later than December 1st, says Michelle Roberts. And this is this is what Robert said to Shams Carney of the Athletic and Stadium about it. We can't go much beyond December first for a free agency. We have a projected BRI, which I think teams appropriately plan for. I don't think we can de- deviate much from where we projected the cap to be one hundred fifteen million's latest projection. It may not reflect what people think is the likely BRI, but since I'm of the view the game is not dead and it will rebound, we can do some things with the cap to allow for a free market and not completely destroy what teams were expecting the cap to be as they were planning ahead. Frankly, I think that's going to be one of the easier go- negotiations, figuring out the cap. So, obviously that that's going to be very you know important. I'm sure teams are trying to figure out, okay, so when do we start you know have that tampering pitter? Where do we have... When do we start making offers? When do we start having to maybe sign our players? You know, where they're they're looking. When when does the offseason officially start? All of that usually is a part of that decision making. If they do start free agency December first, definitely does seem like they're going to start the season late January, early February at that point. Because they usually give you about a solid month, two months to get yourself acclimated, get to your new team, get negotiations worked out, and 
everything will work out for the most part. So, we'll, we, we, like I said, we'll have to see how it all works out in that in, in that situation. Uh, like I said, this this year's free agency class, it'll be interesting to see how free agency goes, where the cap is, and how if players really get paid. So, it, it, it's definitely something to me that I think you, you that is going to be interesting to keep an eye on. But at least we have an idea of the latest when free agency can start because we don't even know what the earliest timetable could be potentially for free agency to start. Obviously, they said December first, so it's October. So that means we're belief we're below two months away from free agency starting. So maybe it'll start in a month potentially. Maybe it'll start around Thanksgiving. I mean, these are all questions that we'll figure out what the answers are going to be. Also, Roberts had comments about the bubble success and how he and how she feels about how everything has gone. And I quote, she said, I'm enormously proud of both this league and our players in that in the face of what appeared to be impossible to overcome. We took a breath and we decided to be smart about it. If this is over then this is over. If the season is done, then the season is done. Is there a way to salvage it? How can that look? Ten of thousands of hours of calls, of meetings with people being patient and smart, created this bubble. Roberts obviously announced in March that she would be stepping down, a process likely to occur after this offseason negotiations for a start date, draft date, free agency, salary cap, luxury tax, and etc. So, obviously... Roberts, as you know, like I said, was stepping down from her from her spot with the MBPA, and I'm sure the NBA is going to start looking for the replacement, looking for someone to replace her. But obviously, it's great that she's staying on through everything that's going on to at least make sure. Hey, when I leave, we're put in a good position. Everything has been worked out. We've discussed a lot of different things, and now I can entrust whoever my next replacement is to take control of it, having a foundation and having a, a, a idea of what to do through the COVID pandemic and through everything that's happened through COVID. So that's obviously really, really, really good. And in another report, obviously going back to Houston, their head coaching search, John Lucas is an emerging candidate to replace Mike D'Antoni in Houston. He is John Lucas, if you don't know who John Lucas is, is the Houston Rockets player development coach as he's emerging as a candidate to replace him. Obviously, that's something that has been popular uh, with teams to maybe have in-house replacements. Lucas is 66. He's 66. He spent 14 seasons in the NBA with the Rockets, three stints, Golden State Warriors, San Antonio, Milwaukee Bucks, and Seattle Supersonics, averaging 10 points and 7 assists per game. Then he started coaching with the San Antonio Spurs the 76ers, the Denver Nuggets, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's also worked with the Los Angeles Clippers as well and has been on Houston's teams in record memory. Now, Ben DeBose, a guy who has an insight track on it, said, and I quote, he's not saying that John Lucas is my preferred candidate, but we've got to stop this nonsense where we judge a head coach on a, on a small sample. Solely by wins and losses. How many coaches do you think win a lot of games with the pre-Iverson 76ers and the pre-LeBron Cavaliers? Hint, those teams were drafting number one for a reason. The talent sucked. So obviously, he's saying, listen, based off his history, we are not. We don't need to judge his history. He did not have the best teams. Where the Rockets obviously have a pretty talented team. Now it's just about, can he maybe get them over the top to maybe potentially make the playoffs? So obviously... Just another eye Houston fans can keep an eye on and and see potentially, hey, is this the guy that we think can come in, help us, and compete? Because that's going to be the big question. Do they have what it takes to be successful? Do they have what it takes to get them over the top? And that's going to be a question that's probably going to stay around for a good while. So we'll have to see how it all 
works out and how it all gets together. But that's all the time we have here on the GSMC Basketball Podcast. Thank you for tuning in once again. Thank you for letting me be part of your day. Don't forget to listen to our other amazing podcasts here at the GSMC Podcast Network. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media, Twitter, as the main source of communication. And this is your host, Bryce, saying have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program